uh, good morning students whether my screen is visible i mean audible yes sir yes sir okay right uh, good morning students so welcome to the module 18 for the ic engine subject in the unit of the petrol engines right so last class we discussed about uh, the spark plug and the governors right so what is the governor and what is governing right so that we seen and then what are the methods of the governing right so what is governor anyone anyone what is governor speed governor governs the speed sir right it governs the speed right it regulates the speed right depending upon the load condition and the speed condition right so it regulates right it regulates the fuels also right then what are the methods are there what are the governing methods anyone what are the governing methods what are the governing methods are there anyone right so uh, for a petrol engine a gas engine and the diesel engine right so what are the governing method they are using means for the petrol engines we are using the quantitative governing and for the diesel engines we are using the quality the quality governing right then the gasoline engines right hit and miss governing we are using right so we have three methods right we have three methods of the governing process so one is the hit and miss governing right that is mostly used in gas engines and the second one is the quality governing right that will be used for the compression ignition engines that is the diesel engines right and for especially the for the si engines we are using the quantity governing right so the fuel supply right the fuel supply will be regulates depending upon the speed of an engine right so the next topic right today we are going to see about the combustion right so what is combustion and what are the terms or what are the concepts and definitions are there in the combustion and what are the stages are there in the combustion process of the si engine right so first we can see what is combustion anyone what is combustion burning of fuel burning of the fuels right so uh in the spark ignition engines right in the spark en ignition engine the mixture right the mixture will be prepared outside the cylinder right outside the cylinder right so the the mixture right the fuel and air will be mixed outside the cylinder right that equipment will be called as the carburetor right so the carburetor mixes the fuel and the air mixture and it will be sent to the engine cylinder right so here the combustion will be takes place inside the cylinder inside the combustion chamber the combustion will be takes place right so generally the fuels right generally the fuels uh, it's a uh, hydrocarbon fuels right so it contains hydrogen molecules as well as the carbon molecules so the chemical reactions will be taking place between the hydrocarbons and the oxygen which is present in the atmospheric air right so in the air fuel mixture we having fuel and the air right in the air we have some oxygen contents right so in the fuel we having some uh, carbon elements and the hydrogen elements right so there is some chemical reaction will be occurs in the combustion chamber while burning of the fuel air mixture right so that process is called the combustion process that process is called the combustion process right so there is a chemical reaction there is a chemical reaction between the hydrocarbons in the fuels and the oxygen in the air right so while the combustion will be takes place after that combustion after the burning it will create some exhaust gas right so in the exhaust gas we are having in the it produces the carbon dioxide and some water particles and it will liberate some heat energy right it will liberate some 
heat energy right so the actual process of the combustion is very complicated one right actually the actual process right for the theoretical process we can we can define easily right it is a combustion process right so this type of exhaust gas will be producers right so that is called the dissolutions right the dissolutions will be somewhat easy in the theoretical cycles but in actual but in actual process it's a very complicated one right it is a very complicated one still some researchers researchers are going on right so in the combustion process also right right so during the combustion the large amount of heat will be generated right the large amount of heat will be generated this heat will run the ic engines right so the heat will run the ic engines right so what are maybe so the combustion of the si engine will require some conditions right so what are the conditions it's a very simple conditions right so the proper mixture the proper mixture of the iron fuel will be uh, gets into the cylinder right that's the first one right so how we can get a proper air fuel mixture by the carburetor then the compression ratio right so for the petrol engines its compression ratio will be around 6 to 10 right so if it is for the diesel engine the compression ratio will be high that is uh, nearly 16 to 20 that right, 16 to 20 will be there for the diesel engine but here for the si engines for the petrol engines the combustion will be 6 to 10 right then once the air fuel mixture gets into the cylinder so what will happen the spark has to be produced right the spark will be produced in the spark plug right the spark will be produced in the spark plug with a required intensity with the required intensity then once the spark is produces what will happen during the spark right due to the spark the burning of the fuel will be occurs the burning of the fuel will be occurs that is called as the combustion that is called the combustion right so in that combustion process we have to note where the combustion will be start at what the combustion will be starts and how it will be propagate how it will be propagate that is called the flame propagation that is called the flame propagation right that you have to see right so when the spark ignites that air fuel mixture right so how it can start the burning that's one important condition and how the burning will be there in the entire system that the entire cylinder how the burning will be occurs right so the flame propagation that also a important one right so these terms we have to remember right so combustion is a chemical process between the fuels and the air fuels and the air air molecules right so in the fuel we having the hydrocarbon molecules and for the air we are having the oxygen molecules right so by the chemical reaction it can produce some carbon dioxide water vapors and some heat energy right so it's a very complicated process okay right? so here we have some definitions and some basic concepts regarding the combustion right so that we can see right uh, we already know in actual engines in the actual engines the combustion is a very complicated process right so we earlier we said that one right so in the actual process right in the actual process uh, combustion is a very complicated one it's a very complicated one right so that's the main concept right see the combustion it's very complex combustion problems in the mixtures of the air fuel mixture is very complex one right then uh, for the ic engines for the ic engines it derives the energy in the form of the heat by the combustion process right so uh, we are telling that we have to supply some homogeneous mixture we have to supply some homogeneous mixture of the fuel and the air mixture right homogeneous mixture of the fuel and air in the combustion chamber right so due to that homogeneous mixture it will be burns by the spark but in most of actual actual engines we, we are not getting the homogeneous mixture right so we never gets a homogeneous mixture inside the cylinder in actual right for the theoretical we can say it is a homogeneous mixture but in actual it is not possible right in actual it is not a possible one right so it never homogeneous it never homogeneous right so uh if it is in homogeneous the flame propagation the propagation will be in uniform manner right so if it is in not 
homogeneous mixture surely the flame propagate will varies surely the flame propagates will be varies right so the uniform distribution will not be there right the uniform distribution is is not there in the heterogeneous mixture right heterogeneous mixture there is no there is no uh, uniform distribution of the fuel air mixture uh, right so due to some leftover residuals that is the burned gases right so uh, due to some leftover residual burned gases in the clearance space in the clearance space in the cylinder right so that is uh, during the scavenging process what is scavenging what is scavenging the exhaust gas the removal of the exhaust gas from the cylinder right so while pushing the exhaust gas to the cylinder some burned gases will be uh, stored in the clearance volume of the cylinder right so that will affects that will affects see the previous stoke right so in the previous stokes some exhaust gas will be left over that left over gas is produce some dissolution it produce some dissolution right so this due to dissolution the non uniform distribution will be occurs so the chemical process the combustion process is very complex one right then what are the definitions the basic definitions are there in the combustion right so first we can see what is normal combustion what is normal combustion right so if the mixture will be the homogeneous mixture if the mixture will be the homogeneous mixture so the flame travels from the starting of the combustion to the end of the combustion it will be uniform manner right it will be a, a uniform manner right it will not change its shape and it will not change its velocity of the flame right so that type of combustion is called the normal combustion right so you can see the flame travels will be from the starting of the ignition from the starting of the ignition and up to the end of the combustion process at the end of the combustion process it's it will not change its speed and the shape right so that type of the combustion is called the normal combustion right then what is auto ignition second one is the auto ignition right so what is auto ignition right so the mixture of the fuel and air ignites prior to the reaching of the flame point prior to the reaching of the flame point that is a flame front right so that is called as auto ignition you can remember this so the mixture of the air and fuel the mixture of air and fuel ignites prior to the some reaching the flame front right that is called the auto ignition right then the self ignition temperature the self ignition temperature it's a temperature right it's a temperature at which the fuel will ignite itself without the flame without the flame the fuel will get some ignition that flash point right that temperature is called the self ignition temperature self ignition temperature right so in this slide you can see normal auto ignition then self ignition temperature and what what is the flame point flame front right so in the normal in the normal combustion the heat will be forward ah oh, you can see the heat will be forward boundary of the reaction zone of the flame right so that flame is called the front of the flame that is flame front right so for example if a piece of paper if a piece of paper i can burn here right so how the paper will be burning i ignite here this point i will ignite the paper so how so the paper will be burning like this is it right or not so the the paper will be burning like this is it correct anyone if i ignite the paper if i burn the paper in our one corner so how the flame will be goes up to the end right so that shape right that shape is called the flame front that is called the flame front is it clear the boundary right the boundary of the reaction zone the boundary of the reaction zone the forward boundary of the 
reaction zone of the flame is called the flame front is it clear purin chapa yes sir okay yes sir yes sir right so that is called the flame front right so it is defined right it is defined as the surface of the area surface or the area right so the surface or the area between the luminous region that is the burning region that luminous right luminous region and the dark region the remaining region the remaining region of the unburned charges right so that shape that shape and area is called the flame front and the next the velocity of the flame the velocity of the flame right so how speed the flame will be passes how speed the flame will be passes it will move to the dark region it will uh, it will from the re uh, luminous region to the dark region that is called the spatical velocity that is called the spatical velocity right so the spatical velocity is depends upon the shape and size of the combustion chamber right so it will be depends on the shape and size of the combustion chamber right then the it has two components right the velocity of the flame have a uh, two components right one is the transformation of the velocity and the gas velocity right one is the transformation of velocity and one more is the flame velocity right so formula is defined defined as the relative velocity the burned gases which the flame front moves from burned to unburned gases burned to unburned gases right so it is the velocity it is the velocity by which the unburned gases approaches the burning zone right is it clear that so, so that that process is called the former that is that is called the former right so so far what are the definitions we can we seen so the first one is what is normal first one is what is normal right what is normal and what is the auto ignition and what is the self ignition temperature the self ignition temperature and what is the flame front what is flame front and what is the spatial velocity and the, what are the components of the velocity what is the transformation velocity and the gas velocity and the former and the former right so these are the definitions we have seen then the combustion right so due to the combustion what will happen so during the combustion the air fuel mixture will burns right at the time it can produce some exhaust gases with the liberation of the heat with the liberation of the heat energy right so that is called the general combustion that is called the general combustion so combustion is defined as so due to the rapid the high temperature oxidation of the fuel with the liberation of the heat energy that is called the combustion right so generally the fuels will consist of the carbon molecules and the hydrogen molecules right the carbon molecules and the hydrogen molecules and it will be burned by using the oxygen content present in the air right so that is called the combustion process right then we have seen what is the ignition limit right uh, we already know that what is lean mixture what is the rich mixture what is lean and what is a rich what is lean mixture what is a rich mixture anyone petrol quantity kam hai because lean mixture ah while while comparing to the air right while comparing to the air the fuel quantity will be somewhat less that mixture is called as lean mixture if the fuel will be somewhat higher than the air proportion that is called the rich mixture right so what are maybe the engine right either lean mixture or rich mixture right so the ignition have some limit right the ignition have some limit right so that limit is here the between the range of 9 is to 1 to 21 is to 1 9 is to 1 to 21 is to 1 right so this is the limit ignition limit right this is the ignition limit so if you are taking the 8 is to 1 or if you are taking the 20 22 is to 1 right so the flame will not be get ignited right the flame will not be get ignited right so 
in the within the, within the particular range only the the flame will be occurs right so the flame will be propagate and it will be produce the ignition right so the flame inside the combustion chamber will propagate the flame from the spark to the end of the combustion will takes place will takes place only the air fuel ratio only the air fuel ratio is in the range of 9 is to 1 to 21 is to 1 it is called the ignition limit right so at the time the temperature of the igni the temperature of the cylinder will be 1500 kelvin 1500 kelvin right so beyond the this range right beyond this range that limited range 9 is to 1 to 20 is to 21 is to 1 right so either it may be a lean mixture either it may be a lean mixture or a rich mixture the combustion will not a possible one the combustion will not a possible one right so most of the character fuel ratio character chemically correct mixture that is the stoichiometric mixture is 15 is to 1 right so the chemically correct mixture of the fuel air ratio is for the oxo aten for oxo aten is 15 is to 1 that it is a one type of gate question right so what is the ignition limit what is the ignition limit for the engines right so 9 is to 1 to 21 is to 1 at the same time for the stoichiometric that is a chemically correct mixture chemically correct mixture what is the air fuel ratio that is 15 is to 1 that is 15 is to 1 right so these two you have to remember is it right then uh, this is also the same it will be indicated by the graph it will be indicated by the graph you can see the practically the 9 is to 1 to 21 is to 1 practically it is 9 is to 1 to 21 is to 1 and for the 15 will be the stoichiometric chemically correct mixture for uh, the ignition limit right it's, it will be the ignition limit for the practical combustion right but always the practical and theoretical will have some difference right so for the theoretical one here we mentioned the 7 7 is to 1 to 30 is to 1 right it is for the theoretical one right so you may remember these numbers right so for the 15 is to 1 is the chemically correct mixture chemically correct mixture. that is the stoichiometric mixture right and for the practical it will be the range will be 9 is to 1 to 21 is to 1 and for the theoretical and for the theoretical cycle it will be 7 is to 1 to 30 is to 1 you may remember this one right so by depending upon it may be a lean or a rich right so beyond this limit it is not possible to take a combustion process right it is not possible to take a combustion process right then the stages of the combustion then the stages of the combustion right so it is the expected question from the university examinations right so what are the stages are there in the combustion process right right in generally uh, what are the strokes are there in the si engines for the four stroke engines what are the strokes are there anyone what are the strokes are there in the four stroke engines anyone anyone intake compression power exhaust right so intake that is suction compression expansion and the exhaust right so for the intake right so for the intake stroke what about the piston position right so the piston will be moved from tdc to bdc right in the suction stroke right after that compression stroke the piston will move from bdc to tdc is it correct or not right so while in the compression process what will happen the piston moves from bdc bottom dead center to top dead center right so when the piston move, uh, reaches the tdc right before the tdc what will happen the combustion will be taking place the combustion will be taking place right so the the positions right so where the combustion will be starts and where the combustion will be end right so these terms will be uh, how we can note means the crank rotation right so for the valve timing diagram and for the port timing diagram right so you may remember that one right so what is the valve timing diagram what is the port timing diagram what is valve timing diagram anyone
anyone wall timing four stroke sir wall timing four stroke engine okay right so what is wall timing diagram the angle at which valve uh, open during ah, each cycle right. so the angle right so whose angle that one the crank rotation right the crank rotation's angle right so depending on the crank rotation when the valve will be opens and when the valve will be closes right so that we have to indicate in the um, valve timing diagram right so by the combustion process by the combustion process the both the valves right inward valve as well as the exhaust valve will be in the close to position is it right or not right so during the combustion process the both the valves are in the close to position right that we have to remember the first term right so the inlet valve and the exhaust valve are in the close to position right so when the piston moves from the bdc to tdc right so for the compression process right so when the piston reaches the tdc right before the tdc what will happen the flame will be propagates right so the ignition will be starts is it right or not right so uh that process is called the combustion process right so that process is called the combustion process the combustion process will be represented by the pressure versus the crank angle diagram the pressure versus the crank angle diagram right so here we can see one two more question right so it's a very important question right so what is motoring curve what is motoring curve right so the without the combustion uh, without the combustion process without the combustion process the piston moves from uh, in the compression stroke as well as the expansion stroke without the firing without the firing it will be moves from uh, bdc to tdc and tdc to bdc that is the compression stroke and the expansion stroke will be taking place without combustion without combustion right so that process right so during that process the curve has to be drawn that curve is called the motoring curve that curve is called motoring curve so you may see here you may see here right so what is the motoring curve right so here you can see it is the compression process right so while the compression what will happen the piston moves from bdc to tdc right the piston moves from bdc to tdc and for the exhaust stroke for the, sorry for the expansion stroke what will happen the pistons moves from tdc to bdc right so the crank rotation will be indicated by that angle uh, the crank will be indicated by the angle theta at the same time what about the pressure right so if the compression will be taking place surely the pressure will be increases and the for the expansion stroke so due to the pressure so what will happen the piston will be uh, pushed towards the bdc right so on the time the pressure will be reduces right so this curve right without burning right without the firing of the air fuel ratio that is the working substance right so without firing we have to draw the curve like this right this curve is called the motoring curve right it is a very important two mark right so uh, it is a um, non firing position right if it is fires what will happen so when the compression process will be over right so the ignition will be starts the the fuel and air mixture will be burns at the time it will increases the pressure right so drastically it will increases the pressure is it correct or not see the pressure will be increases from here to here right so it is called the compression process and it is for the combustion process and it is for the expansion process right so the p and t diagram sorry p and theta diagram that is the pressure versus the crank angle of the uh, cylinder right crank angle of the engine right so the graph will be like this right? the graph will be like this right so do you have any doubt in this graph it's a very simple graph it's a very simple graph right so the pressure versus the crank angle right so without firing and with firing how the pressure will be varies is it clear is it clear or not yes sir clear okay right fine so but the theoretical and actual are having a lot of differences right so the theoretical and actual are having a lot of differences right so here you can see it's a theoretical graph right in this graph the all the lines will be see in a straight manner right 
so the compression sorry the compression and the pressure increases and the expansion will be there right so all of the straight process right but in the actual case it will not like this right in actual case it is not like this so for the actual uh the pressure and the crank angle diagram will have the three stages right so one is the ignition lag one is the ignition lag the flame propagation and some after burning and after burning right so now you can see in this graph right so at the point a right so at the point a right so this point when the spark will be produces the spark will be produces right so you can see so here the bdc position right here the bdc position these two are the bdc position right so here the bdc position there is there and here the tdc will be there right so when the in the compression stroke in the compression stroke the piston will be moves from bdc to tdc is it right so the piston will be moves from bdc to tdc right so before reaching the bdc what will happen the combustion will be starts right so the angle before the piston moves the bd uh, it reaches the tdc position the ignition will be starts right so that spark producing point is called here i noted as a a point right here i noted as a is the spark igniting point it is spark ignition point right so here i mentioned the ignition lag right what is the ignition lag what is the ignition lag right so always it will take some time always it will take some time when the spark will be produces the spark will be reaches the uh, air fuel ratio that is the uh, mixture of the working fluid right so then it will starts to burn it will starts to burn right so that small gap that small timing period is called the ignition lag that small timing period is called the ignition lag when the spark will be produces from the spark plug the spark has to reach the working substance air fuel mixture and it will starts to burn right so that small timing gap is called the ignition lag right so here we mentioned the ab curve right so here the timing right it is the timing of the ignition lag right so when the spark the spark will be produces at the a point then the fuel and air the fuel and air will takes place of the burning will be starts at the b point right so the timing period of the spark produces and the burning of the fuels right so that term is called the ignition lag that is the first stage of the actual pressure and the crank angle diagram is it clear so what is the ignition lag is it clear or not prin chapada ignition lag what is ignition lag right so you can see then the second one is the flame propagation right uh you can see here the flame propagation will be denoted by b and c curve this is the flame propagation right so between the b and c right so this curve this curve is represented as the flame propagation right so it is also a time duration right it is also a time duration so how we can say it is time duration means the crank rotation will be there right the crank rotation will be there right so the piston after the ignition lag the piston reaches the tdc and the piston again it will moves to the bdc positions also bdc positions also right so once the flame uh, once the uh, combustion process will be taking place what will happen surely the pressure will be increases while burning of the air fuel mixture surely the pressure will be increases see you can see here the graph b and c the pressure will be gradually so not only gradually it's rapidly increases is it right so the pressure will be rapidly increases is it correct or not right so it is also a time duration between the point b the point b that is the combustion starts and where the combustion will be ends the the end point will be the peak pressure 
right the end point will be the peak pressure that is a maximum pressure produced inside the cylinder right so that curve is called the flame propagation that curve is called the flame propagation right so most of in this uh, flame propagation the heat will be produces the heat will be generated and right? the heat will be generated due to, during this combustion process right is it correct or not right so normally the angle the angle will be 30 to 35 degree before the tdc right the angle will be 30 to 35 degree before the tdc that is the combustion start process the combustion start process the angle will, will be 30 to 35 degree before the tdc that is the b point and for the c point it will after the tdc it will after the tdc that is 5 to 10 percentage sorry 5 to 10 degrees 5 to 10 degrees after the uh, tdc position after the tdc position right so the b point will be before the tdc it will be opens and the c point will be after the tdc the c point will be after the tdc so the flame ignition the flame propagation is between this angle right so before 30 to 35 degree before the tdc and 10 to uh, sorry 5 to 10 degrees after the tdc the maximum pressure will be reaches right so this is called the flame propagation this is called the flame propagation right so once the flame propagation is over what will happen it will get the full burning it will get the full burning that is called the fire cycle that is called the fire cycle right so that stage is called after burning that stage is called after burning right so for the theoretical what will happen uh, we can say the combustion should be completed at c point in theoretical cycle the combustion will be uh, the complete combustion will be uh, over at the c point but in actual it is not like that right so the c point will be that gets the maximum pressure why because the combustion will be completed at the C point, but in actual, the combustion will continues after the C point also. The com the combustion will be continues after the C point also, right? So that is the during the expansion stroke. During the expansion stroke, it will continues, right? So that term is called after burning, right? So in the actual cycle, the combustion will be taking place after the C point during the expansion stroke, right? So which is called as the after burning process. Or after burning stage. So here we have a uh, three stages, right? Here we have a uh, three stages, right? So most of the after burning process, why it can produce the after burning process means so due to the types of the fuel and it may be a, a lean mixture or a rich mixture, right? So one is the type of fuel and second one is the air fuel ratio, right? So during these two conditions, during these two conditions and it will be liberated some heat, right? So depending upon these three, the after burning will be occurs. After burning will be occurs. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, well, sure, right. So there are no random terms. Right. So what are the factors affecting the ignition lag that is the first stage ignition lag right so what are the factors here we have five factors will be affecting the first stage and what are the factors affecting the flame propagation right so that will be uh, six points is there and the second one abnormal com combustions and knocking process right so that we can see in the next class right so now we can stop here okay papa. Do you want to go to class?